This tutorial will teach you how to use Wonderlist. And Wonderlist is a project management tool, or you could think of it as a team management tool, or if you want to boil it down to its most basic function, it's a to-do list. So let's get started learning how to use Wonderlist. So here I am on Wonderlist.com. And there are a couple of different ways you could get started using Wonderlist. First, you could click the Get Started button if you want to sign in with your Microsoft account. If you have an Outlook email address, for example, you could click there and sign in with your Microsoft or your Outlook account. If your work or school gives you a Microsoft account, that's another alternative. Sign in with that. When I started using Wonderlist, I skipped this entirely and just clicked Sign In. And then I chose one of these three options. You can sign in using your Facebook account, your Google account, or again, your Microsoft account, and it just automatically gives you access to Wonderlist. So give me a minute to sign into my Wonderlist account and we'll look at its features and how to use them. Okay, so I've signed into my Wonderlist account and it loads up my brand new Wonderlist. Now the very first time you sign into your account, you might get this pop-up. It says, what would you like to use Wonderlist for? Here's a selection for you to get started. So maybe I want a list for my work, obligations, projects, and assignments. Maybe I want a list for family to-do items. Maybe a grocery list, movies to watch. That would be fun for me to keep track of that. And then if I want to, I could maybe have a private list. I don't necessarily need that or want that. So I'll just click Get Started and all of those project lists or to-do lists appear here at the left. Now from this point on, if I ever want to create another list, all I have to do is go down to the lower left corner and click Create List, and I can make another list. So let's say I'm teaming up with my neighbors and my kids and a couple of friends to create a treehouse for the neighborhood. I could create a list named after that project. So I'll just type in Treehouse, and down here, you can see that I'm set up to be the owner of this to-do list for this project. But notice, I could add other people to this list to help me with this project. Just by typing in the person's email address, it would add that person to this list. They would be able to see everything on my to-do list. They could even add things to my list and also check things off the list. So that's one of the best features, I think, of Wonderlist is the ability to share to-do lists and collaborate with other people on completing those items. For now, I'm not going to add anyone, so I'm happy with the way this is set up now. I'll click Save, and I have another to-do list here at the left. Now, at any time, I can reorder the lists. So I can put Treehouse to the top, I can put it to the bottom, I can put these lists into any order that I think makes sense. Now, watch what happens if I drop one list onto another list. For example, groceries is related to family. So I'm gonna click and hold on the groceries list and I'll put it right on top of the family list. And then I'll let go. And what it did is it combined the two into a folder. And maybe I'll name this folder home. So in my home folder, I have a family to-do list and a groceries to-do list. Maybe I should also put treehouse into that. And so you can very easily organize your to-do lists. And I guess movies to watch should go down there too. Now because all of these lists are organized within the home folder, it's really easy for me to hide those lists. I can just click this arrow here and it collapses that list and just makes everything look nice and neat and organized. Okay, now that that's done, I'm gonna go here to my work list and create my first to-do. All I have to do is go here where it says add a to-do. I just click to add a task to my to-do list. So my to-do is gonna to be to send an invoice. And now that I've typed that in, I can just tap enter and it adds it to my list. Let's create another to-do. So my second to-do is to email Anna about the project. Now this time, before hitting return or enter on the keyboard, I'm gonna go over here to the right and I could click this symbol here to add a due date. So I need to email Anna about the project by January 31st. If I want to, I can put in a repeating event, but that doesn't make sense in this case. And then I also could send myself a reminder. Maybe I want to be reminded two days in advance at, let's say, 4 p.m. So now I have two tasks in my to-do list. Now earlier I showed you how to share a to-do list that you create. Another way to do that is to come up here at the top and click Share. 
and it gives you another opportunity to share a to-do list so that others can add to it and subtract from it, etc. At this point, I need to add a few more tasks to this to-do list, so give me a couple of minutes to do that and I'll resume the video. All right, I've added a few more tasks to this to-do list, and I want to show you that even if you don't take advantage of the opportunity here that you have to star a task or to add a due date, you still can do that later. And I want you to see how to do that. So for example, this task here to complete a needs assessment. I wish I would have put a due date on that. And so I can do that now. I'll just double click on it and a panel opens up on the right side. And here I have another opportunity to add a due date. I can save that and I can also put in a reminder. Now with this panel open, notice that you can also add notes. So I could put in some notes to myself or to others that are collaborating with me on this task. So I'm writing a note to myself about make sure to follow the steps outlined on this web page. And then I'm just going to paste in this URL and this will become a hyperlink that anyone that's working on this project can click to go directly to that web page. I can also add a subtask. Maybe completing a needs assessment is going to take multiple steps and it would. So I could click here and add a subtask of completing a needs assessment. So maybe arrange for initial meeting. I tap to enter and I get another subtask. So choose a team lead for the needs assessment and so forth. So these subtasks help me on my way to completing the major task that's over here. Also in this panel, I could add files. So I can double click there on add a file and I can choose a file that's on my computer, click open, and it will upload that and attach it to this specific task in this to-do list. You may have noticed also that there is a microphone symbol. If you click that, you should be able to record a memo to yourself if you allow microphone access. Make sure I remember to follow all regulations and not cut corners. That's good advice. I can play that back for myself. Make sure I remember. And if I like it, I click the check mark and that recording is now part of the information that's recorded here in this one task. There's also a Dropbox symbol. If you use Dropbox, you can click that button, connect Wonderlist to your Dropbox account, and then you can easily add files and folders from your Dropbox into your Wonderlist tasks. Finally, we have an option at the bottom to add comments. So I can go down there and type comments, for example, I'm working now on initial meeting, so that's my comment. Maybe another member of my team does some work or finds out some information. They can add a comment below, and we can see a running list of comments about the progress that we're making on this particular task. So I really love this panel that opens up. You can do so much with it, and really you can add rich detail to each of these tasks. I'm ready for the panel to go away though for now, so I'll click down here on this arrow symbol and it hides the panel. Now for me, when I'm using a to-do list, it's very important that it be sorted and ordered by date. And so for me, the fact that this is not ordered by date, it does bother me a bit. So I'm gonna go up here to the top, there's a button that says sort, and I can click on that and sort by due date. And everything gets resorted based on what's due soonest. You can also sort by creation date, so what was the first thing created, and the second, and the third, etc. You can sort by priority, and when you do that, the items that you have starred automatically jump to the top of the to-do list. Like I said, for me, I prefer sort by due date. Now earlier, I talked about how you can share your lists with people by clicking here and setting it up, or setting up the sharing at the very beginning of the process when you first create a folder. Now if you end up sharing lists with other people, what happens is you end up with a list of people here at the left side of Wonderlist. So right now it just has me here, but if someone were to share their list or lists with me, I would see his or her name listed here, and I would be able to click to see the items on his or her to-do lists. And once that's set up, I can very easily switch a task from my list to their list. Maybe we've had a discussion and decided that my coworker should be the one to get the necessary permits. I could right click on that task and I could go down to move to do list and then I could choose one of their to do lists from here at the left. You can also click and drag and drop your tasks onto a different list 
like I just did, or even onto a different person and the list that they have. Now there are times when you would want to share a to-do list with someone that is not part of your team, that you don't want to add, you don't want to add them to your list permanently, but you want them to see what's on your to-do list. So if that's the case, what you should do is go here to the upper right where it says more and click there and choose either print list and hand it to them or email list. If you choose email list, it'll open your default mail program and it will copy paste your to-do list into the body of the email and you can just type in the email address of the person and send it to them. So now with my to-do lists created and several tasks created, I can just get to work on the projects and the tasks and as I complete them, I check the box and they disappear. Anyone that I've shared this to-do list with will be notified that I've completed some of these items and they're also notified if I add a new task to the list. If I ever need to go back and look at tasks that I've completed, notice that there is a button here to show completed to-dos and now they're showing up below. The last thing I want to point out to you is if you go here to the upper left where your name can be found, there are some options like changing the background image. I can just click there and pick a different image. I also can restore deleted lists and go into account settings to make any adjustments there that I need to make. For example, with notifications. How often do I want to be notified and for what reasons? I can make the changes there. One of the other great things about Wonderlist is that it is available on many different devices and platforms. So it's available as a Windows 10 app, an Android app, Apple iOS app, it's available in Chrome, and so you can easily access Wonderlist on all of your devices and stay in sync with your team on the projects that you're working on. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribed button. That way you'll be notified whenever I post another video and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel, please consider becoming a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find links to that in the description below.